Now we begin our conversation about induction motors properly. We have had already three videos to get ready for this one. We begin with the creation of a rotating magnetic field. How do we do that? We set up three coils on the stator, the part of the machine that doesn't move. We separate those coils by 120 electric degrees, and in those coils we set up a set of three phase currents like so. We know that doing that will create a rotating magnetic field in the machine that turns about at a velocity that is the same in revolutions per second as the frequency of the currents in hertz. In Canada, it rotates at 60 revolutions per second, that is 3600 revolutions per minute. In Europe, it's 50 revolutions per second, which is 3000 revolutions per minute. Now, let's revisit the creation of a rotating magnetic field. I know we've seen that in the previous video, but it's not going to hurt us to see that again. The three coils separated by 120 degrees. Usually, we prefer, instead of setting the coils like that, to wind them like this. It's more efficient in creating the rotating magnetic field, but we will revisit this later. Now, let's go back to this scenario. We have the three coils and a set of three phase currents in blue, this one, for the current in coil A, in red for the current in coil B, and in green the current for the coil C. At this point in time, the current in coil A is at its peak and the magnetic field is centered on the axis of coil A and it's leaving the coil like so. At this point in time, the current is at its peak in coil B and the magnetic field appears leaving coil B. And at this point in time, the current is at its peak in coil C, and the magnetic field appears as leaving coil C. Let's revisit that more slowly. Check it out. At this point in time, the field is leaving coil A, and at this point in time, the current is at its peak in coil C, but with a negative sign. So the field appears aligned with coil C, but entering coil C. At this other point in time, the current is at its peak and positive in coil B, so the field appears leaving coil B like so. At this other point in time, the current is at its peak, but negative in coil A, so the field appears aligned with coil A, but entering coil A. And at this point, well, again, it's leaving coil C, and entering coil B, and then again leaving coil A. We have gone through a complete rotation between this point and that point. We have seen that in the previous video. Excellent. When I draw an arrow like that representing the magnetic field, actually what is happening in the machine is something like that. We have a bundle of magnetic flux lines, so please imagine that bundle rotating about the machine as we've seen with the arrow before. We have said that it's more convenient for the creation of the rotating magnetic field to wind the three coils A, B and C as indicated here. In reality, we will wind them about a magnetic circuit that consists of two concentric cylinders, a hollow cylinder on the outside and a solid cylinder on the inside. They do not touch. There is an air gap between the two cylinders. This is a cross section of the machine. We better do an isometric drawing of that to clarify. This is coil A, this is coil B, and this is coil C. Immediately you say, well, I see how that will create a rotating magnetic field if you set a set of three phase currents in those three coils. However, this part of those coils and the ones on the back, they're going to get in the way of the rotating element of our machine. Yes, that's right. So that's why we get them out of the way. After all, this part of the coil will have nothing to do with the electromagnetic action of our machine. It's just a current path. Let's see how we're going to do that. Check this out. For coil A, we have the top here 
and we have the bottom of the coil. Let's join that together like so. Allow me. This is coil A that I'm winding like so. Okay. And then at the back, I close my coil like so. So I am winding coil A in my machine. And that is coil A. Let me say these are the two terminals of the coil, uppercase A, lowercase a. And now we do the same for coil B. Here is coil B. Check it out. I do this. I try not to draw over the other one. This is one part. And then I close coil B at the back on the rim of the cylinder to get out of the way of the rotating element of our machine. There you go. There is your coil. And of course, these are terminal thumper case B and lower case B for that coil of face B. And we do the same with coil C, like so. Coil C, going like this. Coil C, and I close my coil C, like so. You see, there is our coil C, and let's say these are terminals, uppercase C and lowercase C, and those are the three coils of the stator of our machine. In this diagram, you even see the currents in each one of the coils. Current IA in coil A goes like that, comes to the front of the bottom, goes into the machine at the top. Current B goes into the machine on this right-hand side and returns from the bottom of the machine on the left-hand side. And this is current C. Well, here again, we have the cross-section of that machine. What we drew before is only the set of coils on the stator, the ones that I have depicted as red dots in this cross-section. We will talk about the yellow dots, the coils on their rotor, later. For now, only coils on the stator 